Awesome. Cool. So good afternoon, good, good evening, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our monthly call, monthly um, Zeek community call. And um, yeah, so we are excited again, because this is like the last call for the year. So all the cool updates for the year will be delivering in this call. And the future people who missed it, hopefully we'll see you next year. Maybe you can have a resolution of at least joining one of these meetings and then we can get to know more about you guys. So, all right. So, well, let's kick off the meeting. And I would like to uh, request Johanna if she wants to share um, updates from Seek LT side of the project. I think the biggest update on the Seek LT side is that so for the past couple of months, the main activity that Seek LT has been doing is that we have been creating a big responsibility matrix of all the responsibilities that exist in the project and who should optimally do that to figure out um, which responsibilities actually exist, um, what current things remain undone, who is doing things, who should be doing things. And the nice thing is uh, we are finally kind of done with this. And we are now starting the process of looking at this matrix and trying to see what this means for the project and what kind of things um, we want to change up uh, to not change to do because of this and you will be hearing about that in the near term future the other thing that we have started talking about a little bit very recently yesterday actually no last week last week um is um events in the next year and um one of the things that uh, we did yesterday is that we put a poll up to see how many people might be interested in having an in-person Seek Week event in the US in 2024, because um, we are considering if uh, it's possible to have such an event again in 2024 and to actually do that, it's hugely important to know how many people actually would be interested in attending something like that. So if you are interested in attending an event like that, please let us know. We posted this like on all of our channels. So it's on um, Twitter, on our Mastodon account, it's on our um, forum, and we posted the link to it on Slack. Uh, so please go to one of those and let us know if you are interested in an event like that, if you're not interested in an event uh, like that, or if you have additional feedback, uh, we are also very happy to hear from you about that. And um, I think those have been the main things that are going on. If you're interested in the work of the CLT, we also post our meetings minutes of our bi-weekly meetings. They are nowadays being posted just on our community forum. So go there, look at them and give us feedback on them. Awesome. Thanks, Johanna. And are there any questions for Johanna? Okay. Christian, you wanted to add something? <laughs> Fill in the survey, people. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but this is really important. No joke. Uh, yes, sure. I, I, I have a few things uh, to, to share today. So first of all, let's see. Um, uh, a reminder that uh, since 6.1 came out uh, at the end of October, uh, this marks the end of our 5.0 maintenance cycle. So, so those uh, releases are at this point unsupported. Um, so if you are still on those or earlier ones, you should try to migrate to 6.0 and further release this sort of as soon as you can. Um, 6.1 itself seems to be holding up pretty well. We haven't yet done any um, patch releases for it. Um, there are two things there to know. Um, so basically one thing that consists of two updates, which is uh, two new parsers in 6.1. This is quick and LDAP. Um, and with any parser that is new in Zeek, we're looking for feedback. Um, so if people are looking at the logs that come out of um, those parsers and you have any observations, anything to share, even if it's just that they, those look good, um, that would be good to know. Um, and for LDAP in particular, we're probably going to do a small change in there because we think that the the, the the naming and the typing of some of those columns isn't quite right, which is sort of a technical detail, but there is um uh there there they're plurals. They're 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 vectors, they're there, there's an assumption in those logs that there's one more than one thing per log entry. And if you are used to processing traffic, um processing Zeek logs that have that property, it's a little tricky. It's 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 trickier in uh in JSON, it's trickier in 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 um in in, in, in UIs that um, analyze the data. So we are probably going to 
change that to singulars um, just because it actually reflects the protocol better. Um, but this is one for the LDAP guru. So if you have experience in that space, take a look at the data, let us know if it's right, and then we'll see what we do with that. Uh, uh, 6.2 development is in flight and going pretty well. Um, this is really only relevant for the folks who are sort of like living off of master. Uh, so basically our latest and greatest development branch. Um, but um, there's cool stuff landing there. So a couple of things that have made it recently are uh, the ability to delay logs. This is basically something that Arne has been working on where, where we've had um, quite a bit of design work going in and discussion about like how to do that right because the, the logging framework is subtle and when you make changes in there, it sort of has to be right. Um, so this basically gives you the ability that when Zeek has decided to do a log right, Anything, a package or whatever you are working on can sort of hook into that and say like, nope, I want to hold on to that log record a little bit longer before we really write it out, which can be really useful for sort of, you know, uh, waiting for additional metadata, additional state sort of to come in and augment that log record. So that's now there. Uh, this is very much something that, you know, we're looking for feedback for just because it's subtle. Uh, so we'll see if people sort of start picking that up. Um, Another thing that's landed uh, and which is quite interesting is a change to Zeek tables, which is sort of everywhere, but but I uh, specifically mean Zeek tables that are indexed with patterns, where there is now an ability that if you have such a table and you look it up with a string, you will get parallelized lookups of all the entries in the table that match that, where the string matches that pattern, and you will not get one entry back, but a vector of the values in the table for everything that matches that table. I'm uh, sorry, that is the, the, uh, where the string matches the patterns in that table. A little subtle, <laughs> as you can tell, uh, but really powerful. So this is brand new. Um, it's already documented. Check it out. Kind of cool. Um, what else is there? For the, for the spicy team, all eyes are on performance right now. Um, this is basically Robin and Benjamin sort of like really um, sort of, yeah focusing on that sort of uh, for the next sort of several weeks. And Johanna's TLS parser is nearing the point where we can use it for performance analysis uh, analysis and direct comparison of the BinPack parser, which she is also maintaining, versus the spicy parser. So this is pretty, pretty exciting for us. And we'll probably do a bunch of work on that in the near future. Um, and then speaking of performance, one thing that I'm pretty excited about is that we've for a while now had the ability to um, gauge performance per PR for changes that is that are coming in um, uh, across a set of basically uh, macro micro benchmarks. Um, and this is something that at least I've sort of started to use sort of regularly when I look at change sets going in. Uh, and this is this is clearly super useful and powerful and this is still a little tucked away so that most people who don't know about that setup cannot yet see that. Uh, but we're looking into ways uh, of hooking that into the GitHub UI so that you know basically anyone who's working on a PR can gauge that, can see that. Um, so that's pretty exciting too. Um, yeah, so basically there's there's a bunch of stuff happening. This is just sort of a quick walkthrough. Uh, follow the news file, follow the changes, um, get in touch on GitHub, sort of the usual. Uh, thank you, that's all I have. Awesome, that's a wonderful set of updates. I do have a question though. For the TLS parser that we are testing, uh, that Johanna is building on Spice, mm -hmm. is it going to be available in 6.2 or it's still not available? If you, we have just the regular TLS parser in 6.2. Great question. I think the short answer is we don't know yet. Okay. Um, yeah, it depends too much on 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 where it comes in and how it behaves. This is this is essentially the analysis that we have to do right now for anything where we're considering migrating parser. So uh, uh, so thank you for mentioning that because it, it it it's an important topic actually. So one thing that we're not planning to do is replace any existing parser in Zeek with a spicy implementation. It is really just a matter of for anything that is new that is coming in with Spicy, understanding the performance of those parsers. And just because Spicy is still pretty new technology. And, and the beauty with this TLS parser is that, you know, the same person has implemented both the BinPack one and the Spicy one, Johanna, um, and it is sort of manageable in size. So it, it, it makes sort of side-by-side -side performance analysis pretty feasible. Um, so we'll need to take a look at that and then make that call. And if that will happen in time for 6.2, I think we frankly don't know yet. It's certainly possible, but I, I, I don't know. I think we don't know yet. I want to be the negative voice. I doubt it. Ah, okay, good. It's All right. It will be an option, but I doubt it will be in a shape where it might replace the current one. Yeah. 
we, we, we are we are in general lacking right now sort of a, a per analyzer sort of ability to say I want this or that right so th that's that maybe we need to go there in the future but but we'll see so for now this lives in in Johanna's branch and people are sort of welcome to check it out there but um yeah we'll take a look I I will I will just take Johanna's prediction here and say perhaps not but we'll see so Cool. Well, that's good to know because I was under the impression that maybe we are rewriting some of the bin pack parsers mm. in, uh, in spicy and they will replace the, the actual bin pack parser. But uh, it makes sense that the new and upcoming protocol parsers will be written in spicy, but we are gauging the performance right now on how well the spicy parsers perform versus mm -hmm. the parsers that are like written inherently in bin pack. So that's good yeah. to know because I was like, maybe I should start kind of like uh, <laughs> contributing and like start with- Yes, you should. <laughs> Future people, <laughs> you should. Okay. We yeah. should support the, some of some part of the implementation in spicy. But if we are not replacing the current um, bin pack parsers, then I might have to pick a new protocol to actually implement in spicy. Yeah, totally. Uh, if, if nothing else, then just to sort of, you know, uh, you know, learn the ropes of how you write a spicy parser. I I, I had zero MQ sort of on my radar that I think would be a nice one to write because I think it's it's well documented and I don't think there is one at all right now. Um, anyway, there's 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 always something. So uh, yeah, go for it, Fatima. Okay, cool. Uh, I I'll take a note for my uh, for my Christmas holiday break list. Ah, One things to nice do. Because, you know, like you have a lot of time in hand and you don't like. If I don't do anything else, spend it in like sleeping in my bed, like binge watching. Like, it's still not good for me, at least. I, I I always think that, and then it never happens. But I wish I'd find the time. Yes, exactly. Are you cool. discouraging me, Christian? <laughs> oh no 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 no! no. Yeah. Go Fatima, go Fatima. Okay, cool. Well, on, on the part of the um, LDAP and Quick analyzers, we have been running the ones that are already there in before six dot two version, and they are just working fine. Uh, I haven't looked more into the logs and see if there are any problems. But if there are new fields that are getting parsed in the new and upcoming version of LDAP and quick parser in 6.2, uh, then we we are we are like quite interested in testing that out because mm -hmm. log 4j happened and we were like, we need an LDAP parser in Zeek. And that was the time DOP implemented that, hey, look, there is already a parser. Let's just like import it and then import yeah. it. So I think that was really helpful for the log parsing, uh, LDAP log parsing. So yeah, it's just like my two cents on testing it mm -hmm. out, reporting if there are any bugs or issues with the new versions of, or upgraded versions of Quake and LDAP parsers. So if people yep. there, they see a lot of Quake and LDAP traffic, it's kind of like uh, worth it to have those uh, protocol parsers installed in your Zeek uh, installation to kind of like make use of it. All right, so um, thank you, Christian, for all the updates, really cool. And um, with that, I think I'll ask, go ahead and ask Richard if he would want to share anything on the communication side. Sure, I don't have anything on, well, I don't know, maybe it is communication, but I can't remember where I saw this, whether it was a discussion at work or in one of the general channels or whatever, but there were some people talking about seeing a lot of backnet uh, entries in their logs. Um, I don't personally have any experience with this. Uh, BACnet stands for uh, building automation and control. That's what the, the BAC means. And so it's a protocol you typically see uh, for automate, uh, uh, for controlling systems, not for you know enterprise type traffic. And from what I gather or what I remember seeing in the discussion, it was being generated by CISA's uh, BACnet um, script that they wrote and contributed to Zeek. And CISA, that's the US government cybersecurity infrastructure security agency. So this is something that you can download from GitHub if you wanted to run it and see if, you know, see what's going on with it. I have a vague recollection that I also saw a lot of this just in my home network. So I need to go dig around into my logs and see if I have, I think it creates a backnet.log. I have to go back and, and see if that's the case. So it just, uh, I just thought I would mention it. If anyone else is running this uh, CISA backnet parser, and if you are also seeing what is not backnet traffic, um, because that's the case, right? Maybe there is backnet traffic that someone didn't realize and you're discovering it for the first time. But it also could be, however, the protocol parser is working, it's flagging traffic that is nothing, you know, and it's it's not that. Maybe it's it's based on some other aspect to it, whether it's a port or something. Um, so if you see anything, I think probably the best thing to do is just 
talk to us in Slack in the general channel or, or wherever, and you know we'll we'll see what's going on. That's all. Wow, that's interesting. I'll also look into it. Never heard of that backnet script. So thanks for sharing that. Sure. Cool. All right. Well, um, is there anything else people would like to talk, discuss their holiday plans for Christmas? <laughs> All right. And are there any questions? Uh, oh, I forgot about myself. So for the training subgroup, um, we haven't had a, a good chance to meet after the NSF summit, but we have a lot of great ideas for our upcoming next um, year and like how we would want to host the training events for Zeek. And we're exploring those ideas and would love to hear your opinions on it. So we have our training subgroup meeting every other Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, it should be on the Zeek community calendar, but if it's not, I'll put it there. So please feel free to join if you can and share your ideas or just the topics that what would you like to learn about Zeek? Because we just have like a pre-canned notion of these are the five topics that people might be interested in. But then we don't realize until we go and present it and then we get a feedback saying, hey, you didn't cover this part or you didn't cover that part. And I would really, um, I was literally really looking for X, but you, your training was about Y. So um, we would love your feedback because we build trainings for community and users like you all. So yeah, so highly, highly um, appreciate it if you guys would kind of like join in our um, training subgroup meeting that we host every other Friday. Um, and with that said, we will kind of like uh, keep you guys posted on our upcoming uh, training events that we are hosting uh, next year. But yeah, that's all I had. And again, if you are not already, please join Zeek Slack channel. We have different um, Zeek Slack org and we have different channels under that. So you can actually hop on and they are most of them are like really public. So you can just hop on to certain channels to either post questions there have discussions or just drop drop there and say hi and yell at us if you are kind of like if you really liked like you're like this plugin that Christian wrote is awful and I would want to yell at him feel free uh, to do that on on Zeke channel we are all kind of like we hang out there so cool all right that's all the updates I had on the training side and if there are if there are any questions or suggest suggestions or comments this is the time to ask people. And, pe and the future people who are not joining us on this call, you guys can absolutely, I don't know if the comments are enabled or disabled, but you can absolutely come on Slack and ask us questions there. So yeah, we, as I said, you can ask us questions and give suggestions through tomatoes offline as well. You don't have to be in the Zoom meeting to do that, but we would yeah, love comments. Yeah, yeah, comments are enabled on YouTube, but it's not something we like check or really want to like get into a discussion with. It's much better. If you ask us something, it's much better just to do it in Slack because we all hang out there and you're more likely to get an answer there and, and a faster answer. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks, Richard, um, for that piece of information. But with that, if nobody else want to share their holiday um, Christmas plans, then we can adjourn this meeting. Uh, My holidays are going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad to know, Christian. That's, <laughs> you, you deserve a good good holiday break we all deserve a good holiday break after the exactly year, oh so. yeah cool it's been all right so happy holiday holidays to everyone and then we'll see you in the next month which is our new year in january so till then take care and have a happy new year bye folks happy new year bye, bye.